Bibles, turn with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew 9. Matthew chapter 16. Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday night, and then let's come out to the house of the Lord, ready to have church, and let the Lord help us, let the Lord minister to us, all right? Amen. Be praying for the weekend, pray that God would give us souls, Amen. Amen. pray for our bus captains and our bus workers as they go out and knock on doors on Saturday, it's supposed to be a beautiful weekend, thank the Lord, thank the Lord, we're, we're ready for that, and uh, so let's pray that they have a very fruitful time as they go out knock on doors to kids and parents and uh, people are just ready to ready to come to church a desire to come to church and you never know remember one time I, I was preaching to you and I mentioned that uh, they say 12 encounters uh, with people before somebody it's an average of 12 encounters with somebody before they accept the Lord never know when you're going to be get there at the right time be at the right time the right place right and that God is ready to move and work. You never know. When you knock on that door, they could just be getting off the phone from a, a disaster in their home. They could be just uh, getting back home from a, a problem that they are facing. Something major may be going on in their life. When you knock on the door, amen, and you have the answer of Jesus Christ, right? So uh, let's be praying for our bus captains, bus workers. Amen. Pray for those that ride the bus on Sunday. That when they come into the house of the Lord, they come ready to be blessed, ready to touch the Lord, and ready to allow the Lord to touch them. So be praying for our bus riders. Amen. Pray for our Sunday school teachers. Right? Pray for our Sunday school teachers. And let's pray that the Lord would just anoint them, use them, give them the right words, the right message to share. And uh, sometimes the message that needs to be heard is not the one that's in your quarterly right? Sometimes you need to just obey the Holy Ghost. Sometimes you need to branch off and just as the Spirit leads you and, and say the word that the Lord just put you the right words uh, in your mouth and in your heart to speak to those children. And so pray for our Sunday school teachers and pray for your pastor. Amen. The Lord will help us, right? And just all working together to try to bring people to Christ is what it's really, really all about. Amen. Praise God. The book of Matthew chapter 16. One verse tonight, very common verse, verse that well, you, most of you know or can quote most of it, all right? Verse 18, and I say unto thee, also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. There's quite a few. There's a few different theories about what Jesus is referring to when he says, uh, "Upon this rock I will build my church." And maybe he's talking about Peter being the rock. Maybe he's talking about Peter and said, "Peter, upon you, upon this rock I will build my church." Maybe it's on the revelation that Peter had just um, that Peter had just shared with them when he said, "Thou art the Christ, the Son of the Living God." Maybe that's Maybe that's the rock that uh, Jesus was going to build the church on. But then there's some, another theory that the, the rock is Jesus Christ. That he is the rock that built the church on. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Whatever your theory might be, I believe they're all fine. That's all good. All right. We're not, gonna, we're not gonna here tonight to argue theories with you. But I want us to re agree on this one fact. On this one fact. That the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. Amen. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Regardless of what our theory is and what, what that rock might be. Amen. The fact is that Jesus was the builder. Amen. He said, I will build my church, right? 
Upon this rock I will build my church. Amen. And uh, this, here's another fact is that we are part of that church. We are part of the church. Amen. And the, but I, what I want us to agree on, amen, is that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I, we can have a lot of different ideas and a lot of different visions. And I heard one man uh, say, and I kind of like what he said, was, you know, uh, we always picture that this is the church hunkered down in a foxhole somewhere, and hell is just beating it and beating it and beating it. And it's like, it, you know, the church is just holding on to the very end. But that's not what you describe. You know, when was the last time an army took their gates into battle with them? No. No, this is the church, amen, attacking the gates of hell. Hallelujah. And I believe that's, I like that. I like that because I believe the church, amen, ought to be, amen, a militant church, a church going forward, a victorious church, right? Amen, going forward, amen, to win the battle. Praise God. Amen. What I want to talk to you tonight, amen, is I think it's time that hell gets a good look at the church. Amen. That hell gets a good look at the church. Think about it. Amen. Hell needs to see what heaven and what the church really looks like. See, we, what we like is, we like distance. We like, okay, hell, you stay over on your side of the tracks. We'll stay on our side of the tracks. And everybody will get along just fine. Devil, stay out of, stay out of our church. Okay? And we'll stay out of your church. And we'll just coexist together. And we'll all just get along. In the famous words of Rodney King, can't we just all get along? It seems like that's, that's what we want to do with the church wants to do with the devil and with hell. Can't we just get along? Can't we just, listen, I don't like when the Satan attacks the church. I don't like it. I don't like it when Satan checks. I don't like it when, when uh, people in the church are defeated by our enemy. I don't like it when Satan comes into our territory, comes through the doors of the church, and attacks the church, and attacks families in the church, and members of the church. I don't like that. I don't like that. It aggravates me, gets me mad, because I've seen him, and he's done it. He's come and he's taking captive a few of ours, amen? I don't like it when the Satan comes in and he tries to do his work here among the church. I don't like that, but listen, amen, we, that don't mean that I just want him to stay on his side of the tracks. I'll stay on my side of the tracks and we'll just get along. How's that? Man, I don't want to enter into a peace treaty with hell tonight. Amen, I do not want to enter into some kind of a pact with hell that, listen, I won't bother you if you don't bother me. Amen. Because when I read the word of God, it tells us that, listen, amen, we are to be the ones that are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Amen. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Amen. I read that we are to be the conquerors. We are to be attacking. Amen. We are to be approaching the gates of hell. Hallelujah. Seems like too many churches have taken the idea that, you know, we just need to, we just kind of need to, you know, stay where we're at, take care of what we've got, maintain what we've got, don't stir up the devil, don't get the devil stirred up, lay low, don't do nothing, draw attention to yourself, try to blend into the world as much as you can. You follow me? That's what, there's a lot of churches, they blend in a little bit too well, if you ask me. Amen, you can't hardly tell the difference from the church and the world. 
Amen. There ought to be a difference. There ought to be a separation. Don't you think? But we want to, they, they want to say, let's just not, let's kind of blend in. Let's camouflage ourselves. Fly under the radar. Don't let Satan know where we're at. Don't let him know that we're having church. Don't advertise. Be sure and don't do that. Don't evangelize. Don't do any of that. But just kind of lay low and just get by till Jesus comes. But I don't believe that's what God expects from the church. And I don't believe that's what the church was intended to do. Amen. But I believe the church, amen, should be a conquering church. A church that's going forward. Amen. That the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. Hallelujah. Praise God. Man, it's time to move forward. Time to move forward. Amen. I believe it. I think it's time, amen, that hell gets to see what the church looks like. Say, what are you talking about, Brother David? Well, we've tried to keep ourselves so distant, amen, that, you know what, the world don't even really know what church is all about. We're just kind of, we're, we're trying to keep our distance and, and, and just kind of mind our own business and hope that we don't draw attention to ourselves. So, you know, it's kind of like we're like a wagon train going west and we don't want the Indians to know that we're there. A little western little thing there. Okay? We don't want, we don't want, we don't... We don't want Chief Belzebub to know, amen, that we're that the wagon train is moving out. Amen. We don't want to have to circle the wagons or anything. We just want to lay low and get out to California and get ourselves settled out there. All we're trying to do, get me to heaven. I don't care. Just get me to heaven. Well, in the meantime, I think there's a world out there that's lost and dying. Amen. They need to know Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a world that needs to know about Jesus. Amen. Amen. We have, we've had our close encounters with hell, if you would. Man, when I say, when I say that, I'm, I'm talking about the working of hell. You look around, look around us today in our world, and you see the effects of Satan. Amen. In, this, in this, the kingdom of Satan. Amen. You see what hell is doing in the lives of people. You see what hell is doing in homes all around us. You see what hell is doing to drug addicts, prostitutes. Man, you see, if you have, go with our bus captains on Saturday, knock on a few of doors with them, and you will see what hell is doing. Amen. On the other, on the, you know, go behind the enemy lines for just a moment. Amen. Step out of your of the fortress here of the house of God. Go behind the enemy lines with the with a bus captain. Amen. Knock on the door doors of a house that is so full of Satan and so full of the work of hell. Amen. And just see the wickedness and the evil and the difficulties and the hardships and the and the pain and the suffering. Amen. That is all around us. Let me tell you, there's a world out there that's dying. Amen. Because of the kingdom of hell. Amen. Is working in their lives. Hallelujah. They need to see something. They need to see something. Hallelujah. Amen. Every once in a while, amen, hell walks right into our church. That's right. Sits down on a pew in the church. <gasps> really? Sits down on a pew in the church and just sits there and dares us to do something about it. And we want to be careful. We try to be cautious. We try not to, you know, we want to be, we want them to come back. We want them to come back and visit another time. In the meantime, hell is working in their life. Hell is destroying them. Amen. They're dying, lost without God. And they're sitting right on our church pew. Amen. And while they're sitting there, amen, we, we try to, you know, be, act like we're, big city-fied church, you know, and we don't want to worship too loudly, and we don't want to get too carried away, 
away and we don't get, want to get too wild. We're afraid somebody might get scared or, or that we might draw attention to ourselves or that somebody might, oh, God forbid, somebody might actually get delivered in our service. We need to be careful that we don't stir up the enemy. Amen. But I think it's time, amen, that we realize the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. Hallelujah. Amen. They need to see three things. They need to see the they need to see us exalting God. Amen. They need to see the church knows what it is to exalt God. Amen. We need to be lifting up the Lord. We need to glorify God. We need to, when we come into the house of God, we need to not sit back, but we need to glorify the Lord. The Bible tells us that God inhabits the praise of His people. Amen. And if, if there's anything that this world needs to see, if they need to see God. And the only way they're going to see God, amen, is if the church will exalt Him and lift Him up and glorify Him and praise Him. Amen. And bring heaven down right here in the midst of this building. Amen. Then let them see what God really is all about. Amen. Church, we don't need to be afraid or ashamed amen, of the fact that we worship God and we worship Him in the Holy Ghost and we worship Him in spirit and in truth. We don't need to hang our head and be embarrassed about it. Amen. But we can glorify God and give God praise. Amen. And worship Him. Amen. And lift up His name. Amen. Until the glory of God comes down among us. Amen. And those that are here can witness the presence of an almighty God. They can see the glory of God. They can see the hand of God. Amen. I say it's time to worship the Lord and edify and exalt the Lord. Amen. Till heaven comes down. Hallelujah. Amen. Heaven needs to come down. Amen. When we exalt the Lord. Amen. I think the world needs to see what, what heaven really looks like. They need to see what the church really looks like. Amen. Wow. You know. It's kind of like when sinners come, we want to keep them on the porch. We want to keep them on the porch. Don't let them really see what it's all about. We want to keep them kind of on the outside looking in. Don't let them see all the, everything. that there, There's nothing to hide here, church. There's nothing to hide. We don't have to be afraid. Hey Amen. We don't have to be ashamed. We don't have to be embarrassed. Hey Amen. People say, you speak in tongues? Why shouldn't we speak in tongues? Hey Amen. You guys shout and dance in the Spirit? Why should we not shout and dance in the Spirit? You guys run around a building? Hey Amen. Why should we not run around a building? Hey Amen. You guys have Jericho marches? Why not have a Jericho march? Hey Amen. You still lift your hands? You still clap? You still stand? Hey Amen. You still lift your voice? You still sing? I say, yes, Lord. Hey Amen. We need to worship God. We need to exalt the Lord Jesus. We need to lift up the name of God. Hey Amen. And let the world know, amen, that God is real and God is here. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. When you, what do you feel when we have, when we worship? You know, you come into church and you do a quick, you do a quick scan to see if it's safe tonight if I can really get in or if I need to be, you know, behave myself. Yeah. Oh, we got some visitors tonight. I better. Man, you know, Christmas Sunday, Easter Sunday, man, you would think that we were uptown people. You would think so. The way we act. We don't want to, we don't want to get in. We don't get too loud. We don't want to worship too much. We don't want to stand. We don't because there's too many visitors here. Hallelujah. Why not? Why not? Why what do you feel when you worship God? Do you feel his presence? Do you feel God when you worship him? Do you feel the power of God when we worship him? 
When you come into church and you lift up your hands and you're worshiping the Lord, amen, and you're giving God praise and you're singing at the top of your voice, do you feel the power of God? Do you feel the presence of God? Amen. Do you feel like God can work in your life? Well, let me tell you, the sinner that's sitting on the pew, amen, hell that's sitting right on the pew, amen, the world that's sitting right on the pew, amen, when we worship God, I believe they can feel his presence. I believe they can feel his power. I believe they feel like God can work in their life too, amen, and that's why we need to exalt God and lift up the name of the Lord, amen, praise God. Church. Amen. The world needs to see what the church really looks like. The world needs to see what the church really looks like. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you something else. We need to, we need to practice edification in the church. Edification. What's that, Brother David? Amen. Edifying. Edifying. It's edifying one another. Right? Amen. Loving your brother. Loving your sisters, in spite of our differences, in spite of cultural differences, in spite of skin color differences. Hey Amen. We love one another. Regardless of where we came from, regardless of how we got here, don't matter if you came in a Cadillac or if you came on a green bus. Hey Amen. It don't matter how you got here. Amen. Amen, but when we get here, we're all for one, one for all. Amen, we're here, we love the brother, we, we love the church, we love the people of the church. Amen, we lift one another up, we carry one another's burdens. Amen, we, we, are, we have concern and compassion for our brother, for our sister. Amen, we are a body of believers. Amen, we strive to live in unity, one with, another, with one with another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Amen, that you love one another. Amen, we edify one another. Amen, when one is down, amen, the rest lift them up. Amen, when one is feeling. Amen. The rest of them give him strength. Amen. When the devil is attacking one, amen, we all rally to the cause. Amen. When the enemy comes against us, amen, we all come in a charge. Amen. To protect and to lift up and to edify and to strengthen the brethren. Amen. That's what church is all about. Amen. The devil thinks that he can bring division. The devil thinks he can bring destruction upon the church by bringing friction and offenses and, and problems. I say church church. Amen. It's time for the devil to see. Amen. What the church really looks like. Amen. It's time for the world to see. Amen. What the church really is all about. Amen. It's time for the world to see. And it's time for hell to see. Amen. That our love goes more and goes farther. Amen. And we strengthen one another. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You look around the world. You look around the world, those people that are experiencing hell in their life right now. The world is full of hatred, division, divorce, separation, right? Homes breaking up, families breaking up, children hating their parents, parents despising their children. You look around, you see violence, hatred, people attacking, people, uh, uh, I mean, the gossip, the, the, the uh, tearing each other down with their words. I mean, the horrible things that people say about one another. Amen. The violence that's all around us. And I say, Lord, amen, there is no room for any of that in the church. Amen. That's not what the church is all about. Amen. That's not what the church is. Amen. But the church is about unity. The church is about loving the brethren. The church is not about gossip, but the church is about helping one another, strengthening one another. Bearing one another's burdens. Amen. Lifting each other up in the faith. Amen. That's why you're filled with the Holy Ghost. That's why the Spirit of God uses you. That's why the Holy Ghost speaks through you. To lift up the church. To edify the church. To glorify the church. To unite the church. Amen. The world don't know what to think about a church that's unified. Because they don't see that anywhere. They don't see that anywhere in the world. Amen. They don't see that anywhere in the world. And when they walk into a church and they feel the love of the brethren, when they walk into the house of God 
And for the first time, they feel like they are genuinely loved. When they walk into a house of God and they see, hey man, how one we care for one another. When they feel that we are actually absolutely concerned and that we care for them, it makes a difference. That's what the church really is. That's what the church is all about. Amen. That's what the church is all about. And I think it's time, amen, that the world sees what the church really looks like. Hallelujah. And we need to edify one another. Hallelujah. But we need to evangelize. And the church is not meant to sit just inside of these four walls. No. The Bible tells us that after we are filled with spirit, we become witnesses. Right? We become evangelists. We become witnesses in Jerusalem. Right? Judea. Samaria. The uttermost parts of the earth. Man, we can handle Jerusalem, can't we? Oh, we can handle talking to our family. We can, we can handle talking to our family. There's no problem there, man. We can, we can talk to our family and witness to our family until they're sick of us. And they have tuned you out a long time ago. They've turned you off. And now they don't. it just goes in one ear and out the other. It's like talking to a wall. We can handle Jerusalem. We don't do too bad with Judea either. As long as they look like us, right? Act like us. Come on. Can you imagine what, the, what these, when Jesus was telling you, you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Judea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Samaria. What? The Samaritans? Those nasty people? Oh! Oh! You're kidding me. Do you know what they smell like? The Samaritans? Oh, I would go across the street. I would not go across the street. You know what Jesus was talking about? Hey Amen. You know why there was such a racist spirit and a divisive spirit between the Jews and the Samaritans? They had no dealings with one another. They did not like one another. Hey Amen. And that's how we get sometimes when the Lord says, hey, I want you to go to the one, amen, that is not like you. I want you to reach out to the one, amen, that is different than you are. I want you to reach out to the one that don't smell like you smell. Amen, the one that don't wash like you wash. The one that don't clean up like you clean up. The one that don't dress like you dress. Amen, the one that don't look like your family looks. Amen, the one that looks like, amen, they just came from the world and just came from the pits of hell. Hell. Amen. That's who I want you to go to. Amen. You know you're the church. Amen. When you can evangelize. You know you're the church. You look like the church when you evangelize. You know what? The gates of hell has, don't know what to expect when the church comes up against it. Amen. It's been a long time since the gates of hell have even seen what the church looks like. Amen. But each and every one of us are commissioned to evangelize. Amen. little plug here. Man, how many of you know where our church website is? Good. BethelChapelChurch.org. You need to go to it, all right? You need to go to it. I'll just put in a little, I mean, just a really a big plug for myself. Read my blog. Read my blog. It makes Brother Don Harris happy if you read my blog. Okay? Read it. Then he sends me texts. Oh, write another one. Do it. He loves that. So read my blog, all right? Amen. Sister Ruth says, Brother David, your, your title says, Bus Workers Have It Easy. You must have met. She thought it was a misprint. I said, no, it's not. Bus workers have it easy. You got it made in the shade. You got it so easy. 
Read the blog. Yeah. We sit back and we say, well, we go to Beth Chapel. Our bus captains are out there. They're knocking on doors. When are you evangelizing? Oh, but I don't need to. I don't need to. We've got bus captains. We've got bus workers. We've got four buses going out. When are you evangelizing? When was the last time you reached out to a soul? Hey, man, when were you, like Brother Slada, handing out a track? When were you the last time that you reached out and tried to reach a soul for Christ? Hey, man, you got to get out and you got to win somebody to Jesus. Hey, man, that's what the church looks like. Hey, man, what the church looks like is a church that has a burden for lost souls, a compassion for the lost, hey, man, a desire to see them saved, bringing them into the house of God. Hallelujah. Man, I was reading a, a today about a church. Their, their goal is 100,000 people in service. 100,000 people. And I don't agree with everything they teach, but you know what? I thought, where's your goal? Speaking to myself, where's your goal? What's yours? Let me ask you, what is your goal? How many people do you want to reach for Christ? How many pre- people have you tried to reach for the Lord? Amen, if we want to be what the church really looks like, amen, it needs to be a church that's reaching for the lost. Reaching for the lost. Reaching for the lost. Hallelujah. Amen, I want the world to see what the church really looks like. And I tell you, I get disappointed a lot because, amen, I hear them talking about this church, that church, this church, and I think, Lord, the world really needs to see what the real church really looks like. We give them a picture of a church down in Houston, Texas, with 40,000 people in it. We say, that's the church. Can I tell you, that I think the world really needs to see what the church really looks like. Amen? Hallelujah. Stand with me, if you would. Hallelujah. Lord, help us tonight, God. God, help us, Lord Jesus. God, help us to resemble what the church really should look like. Help us, Lord God, to reach out to souls. Help us, Lord God, to reach out to our brother. Help us, oh God, to reach up to heaven. God, I ask you, Lord Jesus, help us to exalt the name of Jesus Christ, to exalt the Heavenly Father. God, help us to edify our brothers and lift up our brothers and love our brothers. God, help us, Lord Jesus, to reach the lost in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord God, to resemble what the church really should look like. Hallelujah. There's a world that's lost and dying, and they need to see. They need to see what the church really looks like. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. What about you, church? Hallelujah. Would you come with me to the altar tonight? Amen. Let's come and let's determine in our heart. Amen. That we're going to let the world see what the church really looks like.